What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am back from the unknown and today I wanted to share with you my personal uh, celebration of October and Halloween. So every year I always try to watch at least one spooky or kind of Halloween related movie from October 1st through October 31st in celebration of Halloween. Halloween is by far my favorite holiday. I love it. The candy, the food, um, the fun and the spookiness of all of it. And of course, movies are a big part of that. So I want to share with you my list of what I'm doing the first, I guess, third of October right now. I'm gonna have a few other videos coming out kind of documenting all the movies that I watched this year. This is something that I do every year. It kind of changes up, but I this year I'm trying something different. I'm trying to watch a few more movies that I've never seen and uh, just kind of bring them into uh, my library, either by purchasing or watching again. Um, just something like that, having them physically uh, in my collection. Again, because I'm a physical collector. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started on October 1st, I got to give an honorable mention to a movie that's Halloween related, but I watched it before October. And that is going to be Double Double Toil and Trouble with Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. I watched this with my daughters. Um, I, uh, I didn't know anything about this, uh, but my wife, uh, she watched this as a kid. She loved everything Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. And now that I have two uh, little curms of my own, thought this would be a good family movie to watch. It got them all excited for Halloween, especially getting out the decorations. So a lot of fun to watch this. It's got Cloris, Cloris Leachman. Yeah, so she was kind of the bad witch. Uh, it, it's a family friendly movie. It's still kind of spooky, kind of funny. Um, and it's like looking at a time machine back in the 90s and kind of all the movies that these girls had back then. Um, but it's an honorable mention, doesn't count for this year. Let's go to October 1st. All right, so for October 1st, we have the trilogy of the newer Halloween movies. I didn't watch all of them. I've seen them in the past, but the one that I haven't watched was Halloween Ends. I've heard mixed things about it. I've been waiting on it, and I kind of wanted to watch all of them up to uh, watching that movie, so I've done that in the past. I finally sat down, and I figured this would be the perfect movie to kick off October 1st with, and I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, I'm not gonna have any spoilers or anything in here. It just, I don't know, it wasn't my cup of tea. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of Halloween Ends. I really liked and appreciated the first Halloween, or I guess Halloween, uh, the, the first one in this trilogy, the second, I guess it's Halloween 2, but it's Halloween, I guess, part, I don't know. It made me appreciate that movie better, and of course the original 1978 Halloween movie was phenomenal, that's a classic. Enough said about that. I love this franchise, um, but Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, um, lit I mean, how are you gonna cap a series like this? Maybe I'll learn to appreciate it later, um, but for right now, I wasn't impressed. October 2nd, you've definitely heard of this actress, Sydney Sweetie, and uh, she has been all over the place in a whole bunch of movies, some that you've seen, some that you haven't, Madam Webb, and uh, I went to a Catholic school, so I went to a private school my entire life, uh, so I was really interested. Anytime one of these religious horror movies comes out, I want to see it, I want to see what it's about. Um, I had people recommending uh, maybe just renting it or streaming it, but I wanted to have it physically just in case, because maybe I liked it, and those people that were telling me that never went to private school and, and never kind of suffered through that. So I wanted to see what this was like. Not a fan. It's good for a watch. I see exactly what they were talking about after I watched it. Uh, Sydney Sweeney is a nun. She goes to uh, this convent. She takes her vows, and then weird stuff happens. Um, you guys can look it up. It, I mean, it wasn't what I was expecting. Um, but it, it's kind of like an old trope. I know it's spooky nuns and spooky stuff. It's entertaining for a single watch. I didn't really have to buy this and I see what they were talking about, but that was my choice. All right, so for October 3rd, I wanted to kind of delve into the 80s a little bit more. And one series that I was always kind of confused about was Return of the Living Dead. And recently I purchased parts one, two, and three, and I fell in love with them. Uh, the first one was phenomenal. After I watched that, I became obsessed and I started buying all the others. Um, so this was uh, part two that I watched on October 3rd. Uh, it probably would have made sense to watch it on October 2nd, but I watched it on October 3rd. Um, 
Guys, this is, uh, you know how in some movies they don't worry about the kids or anything like that? They're fair game in this for the zombies. So, uh, it, it's, it, the practical effects are phenomenal. Um, the makeup, it, it, it's, it's like looking back in a time machine in the 80s. The first one was definitely 100%, like, not for kids. They kind of made this one a little bit more family friendly, if you can, for a zombie movie with, you know, Jaws and, like, zombies eating people. But this is, I guess, more family friendly, more funny, um, more slapstick, but they're dark humor movies. And the same actors that were, two of the same actors that were in the first one also reappear in this one and they make jokes about, you know, reappearing. So the two actors that showed up, phenomenal actors. I can't see this movie without them or thinking about them. Same with the first one. So I highly recommend the first two for sure. And uh, I'm going to be watching the third one uh, maybe in this list later. We'll see. All right, so for October 4th, we have a movie that I do not have on physical, but this has now been a tradition um, where I watch this movie at the start of October, and that is The Ritual. You can stream this on Netflix. Um, I first saw this, and I was blown away by it, and I had some friends stop by. I put it on, and they couldn't stand it. They thought it was too boring. Um, I don't know, it, it might be a hit or miss for you, but this movie has become a staple in my October viewing um, repertoire, I guess. Uh, the Ritual, actors that I wasn't familiar with, uh, whole new cast, no famous actors that I was aware of. Uh, it takes place in the Netherlands and one of their friends passes away and to kind of commemorate his memory or, or, or honor his memory, they go on a hiking trip that he always wanted to go on with all of them. And uh, they get lost in the woods and things spiral from there. I went into this completely blind. Uh, a lot of times I would just surf on Netflix, see what horror movies they were going to be adding to it that I've never seen before and I would watch them. This was one of those movies that it was just spooky season. It popped up on my list. Maybe you want to watch this. I think it was a suggestion list or whatever. I gave it a shot. Fell in love with it. I have watched it at least once every year, if not twice. Um, I love The Ritual. It's based on the book with the same name, The Ritual. I've never read the book. I am in love with the movie, though. It deals with loss, grief, um, human emotions. If you are interested in it, in this first grouping, I think this might be the one that I suggest that you go watch. It's a slow burn but it is worth it. The Ritual on Netflix. For October 5th, we have a Shudder IFC movie, I believe. I, I know it's streaming on Shudder, but this is Late Night with the Devil, and I was able to uh, get the physical steel disc, or uh, I guess steelbook edition, not steel disc, that would be crazy. Um, but this movie blew me away. It was, um, Obviously, Late Night with the Devil, some girl says that she's possessed with the devil and she is on a late night talk show. And you just kind of see what happens. There's, no, again, that's as much as I went into it. I kind of watched the trailers. They don't explain anything that really happens. You're just kind of tuning in to see what this girl does on live TV. The actress that played her is haunting. Um, the way how she plays the camera that's recording her and stares like directly at it is eerie and it's like she's looking right at you. She did a phenomenal job at that being creepy. Um, but yeah, uh, I was able to get this through Walmart and it actually came with uh, a bunch of feelies that I wasn't aware it was going to come with. I think there were only two places at the time when I ordered this you could get it. It was like $130 or like $35 and it came with this. So when I bought it through Walmart, it came with like a signed, uh, I guess, picture of the in universe actor that's the show. It's got an ad for one of his other guests uh, who's like a psychic. Uh, I think this is uh, a bookmark for one of the books that's uh, about the girl that's possessed. And it also came with an air freshener for Night Owls. And that's the name of the late night talk show. So it was really cool. And even the packaging, it comes with uh, uh, kind of like your welcome packet from uh, October 31st of 1977. So with everything involved with that, this is like a really good packaging, advertising. I loved it. Uh, after the ritual, this is probably uh, one of my favorites in this list, but they keep on getting better and better from here. So I'm gonna keep saying that, but definitely go see this if you can. All right, we're on to October 6th, and 
We're getting into the weekend of the first week of October, so you need a movie to put on while you're getting up the decorations. If you haven't done so already, there is no more perfect movie to get you in the spirit, especially with family around, than Hocus Pocus. I grew up with this movie from the 90s on. Again, this is another staple that we watch every year, and I was lucky enough to get the Steelbook version of this. I mean, this Steelbook looks great for display. Uh, we have a kind of like a banner that lights up that we hang up every year. Uh, we love this movie. I was uh, lucky enough to meet one of the actresses um, that plays in it. Uh, phenomenal movie. There's so much that could be said for this. I saw the sequel and I forget what happened. It wasn't very memorable, but maybe that's because it's made for a different generation. Um, but this was made for me, for my generation, and I absolutely love Hocus Pocus. Uh, so this uh, this is watched on the October 6th for the weekend. All right, next for October 7th. Again, I love comic books, and one of the movies that doesn't get enough love, I think, is Constantine, starring Keanu Reeves. Uh, I love this one, and I'm going to champion this movie as much as I can. I want a sequel to this. I don't think it's ever going to live up to how good this was. It's very different from the comics. It, it's very reminiscent of um, what Wesley Snipes did for Blade, because Blade wasn't very Matrix-like. He was uh, um, just wood stakes. He had an open shirt. He had a big fro. Um, Wesley Snipes came in after The Matrix and he changed all that, or I think it was before The Matrix actually. Um, so he kind of changed all that with the black armor, he had a challenger that was all black, his weapons were awesome. That's what Keanu Reeves does for Constantine. Constantine was kind of a skinny English guy with uh, blonde hair and uh, he smoked a lot. The smoking is still in this and it is actually a plot point. Um, and the way how they bring everything together I thought was phenomenal. Uh, I, I love this movie so much and it has one of my all-time favorite uh, cinematic moments in it. And I know this is going to sound ridiculous and it's an ad for the watch, but there's a moment where time kind of stops and uh, there's a watch and it's ticking down to when time is stopping and it zooms in on the watch and you see all this like shattered glass debris slowly going past the watch and it is in such vivid detail and clarity and it's beautiful and then it slowly mixes with like other materials that are like it coming into the scene before time stops and it's I think one of my top two favorite cinematic either images or pictures on the screen so if you guys know what scene I'm talking about or you guys have another cinematic moment that you think beats it let me know but for me just something about that scene with how clear that watch is and how clear you can see every little piece of dust and glass uh, wood debris that are f that's like floating and it's so tiny smaller than a watch but you can see it sparkle and shimmer as it goes by um, but this movie give it a shot angels demons fighting and uh, Keanu Reeves shooting demons and zombies with like holy water and holy weapons. Highly recommended. All right, so for October 8th, we are going back to the Halloween series since it is the month of October, but we're going to one without Michael Myers in Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Now, again, I, I didn't like this movie at the start, which is why maybe the newer Halloween movies are gonna start to grow on me, but this movie, they wanted to try something different without Michael Myers and go down a different path. Uh, kids get like masks, it's dealing with like this witch or warlock, whatever he calls himself. He's got like giant robot agents uh, and they go around and kill people. The masks, they're gonna play like a commercial and it's gonna melt the kids' faces off. And it, it's, it's completely different than the first two Halloween, like Halloween 1, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, completely different, no Michael Myers, but the other Halloween movies are referenced on TV in like different households throughout this, so same universe, maybe not, I don't know, but it's aware of the other Halloween movies. Very different, um, 
But I'm very excited. Tom Atkins, the, the main actor that's in this, he's actually going to be coming to my area. So I'm hoping to get him to sign this steel book. And this is actually a limited edition of 10,000. So uh, I, I think it's interesting, especially uh, a part of the Halloween series. It tried to do something very different at the time. People hated it. And I didn't like it at the start either, but it started to grow on me just because it's so unique and different. And the song is so catchy. It's, I don't know, it brings me into Halloween. So give it a shot if you haven't seen it. It's very different than any other Halloween movie, whether before it or after it, and all these different offshoots, Season of the Witch. All right, so October 9th, we're going back in time, all the way back to 1944, to see The Uninvited. Now, this is a very different movie. Uh, it's all in black and white, uh, but, it's a typical haunted house movie. Uh, I don't want to go into too much. It's just the atmosphere and, you know, there's no surprises. No, they're not really ghosts. It's actually people. No, they're ghosts. It's, it's just, this is, uh, this was the first year I watched it. Um, someone recommended it to me. Uh, I gave it a shot and I really liked it. You got to be in the mood for one of these movies. But The Uninvited, uh, I see why it's a cult classic, why people recommend it, and why it sets the tone for October, for haunted houses, and uh, it definitely gets you in the mood for anything spooky. I, this was one that even my wife, I started to watch it and my wife asked me to pause it. She wanted to watch it with me. So if you have family members that aren't really into like the gore or the other horror movies, give this a shot. This might be their entry point or at least a way to kind of uh, watch a spooky movie with you that's not too spooky. So, The Uninvited, October 9th. All right guys, so we're at October 10th and what better way to spice things up and get them spooky and horrifying than Terrifier 2. I just watched this movie. I know it's been out for a while, but it was a first for me. It's new to me. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed it. It was hard to watch. It raised more questions than answers for a lot of it. Um, Art the Clown, being Art the Clown, uh, got his start in uh, All Hallows Eve or Hallows Eve uh, parts one and two. I think I have it floating around here somewhere. Um, but I actually saw the first Terrifier when it first came out. And if you know the scene, you know what I'm talking about. They actually top it in this, I think. Um, this was one of the movies that got uh, held off on during uh, the pandemic when everything was kind of shut down. And it actually gave the special effects guys more time to perfect the scene that they wanted to kind of overdo that first movie. And I think they crushed it. Uh, this is horrifying. This is gory for the sake of gore. Um, going above and beyond with this movie. So if you can't handle like gory horror or anything else, this movie is not for you. But if you want like some dark humor and some weird stuff like... Uh, teenagers dancing uh, at a club after taking Molly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that subplot is in here, but there is. Um, but there's a lot of other questions that are being raised with Art the Clown. I hope they keep it going because he's kind of like a modern day slasher character that you want to learn more about. And they add a new character uh, to, uh, I guess, his uh, repertoire or his, uh, his team, his crew. Um, so it was definitely interesting to watch hard to watch at a lot of points, but um, special effects guys crushed it. So Terrifier 2, October 10th. All right guys, so this is gonna be our last video for October 11th for this one. First third of October is covered. Um, and this is taking me back to the 90s, very reminiscent, but uh, it's a family friendly film uh, and it's all animated and that is the Halloween tree based on the book by Ray Bradbury I love this so much as a kid growing up in the 90s. I bought the book. I read the book as well it's uh, kind of like a tour of how different countries um, celebrate Halloween uh, a group of kids they're ready to go trick-or-treating but their friend is very very ill he's very sick so to save him they learn all about the different uh, I guess culture is how they celebrate Halloween. Uh, Day of the Dead, just everything associated with Halloween, especially at that time. And uh, 
once that's done, they have to keep his jack-o'-lantern lit because if the candle goes out, their best friend dies. So, very wholesome. How do they save their friends? What do they do? What can they do uh, to actually save him? And uh, just a wholesome, wholesome movie. Great for the whole family. Uh, again, this is just my list. This is what I watched, what uh, I plan on watching with my kids. Days can be swapped up. It is what it is, but this is my order that I've done for the first third of October. What other movies do you think are coming in the next two parts of this? What movies do you think I should definitely watch? Because I have one that I'm gonna watch on Halloween that might be a little controversial. Uh, it's not what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. Until then, I'm Backroom the Unknown. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Backroom out.